Okay, so um, so today we will discuss dual spaces. Okay, dual spaces. So uh, before this, uh, I want to quickly remind you about isomorphisms of vector spaces. Okay, so uh, definition. So again, this is something uh, that has already appeared in 115A, but uh, this is the last piece of uh, the review material for now. We'll, we'll be reviewing some more later on, but for now that's it. So um, we say that two vector spaces, V and W, over the same field F, are isomorphic. If there exists an invertible linear transformation T from V to W, okay? And uh, such a linear transform, such an invertible linear transformation T is called an isomorphism. from V to W. Okay. So the idea that uh, an isomorphism between two vector spaces establishes some correspondence by ejection between the vectors in these two spaces, so that also it preserves the operations in the vector spaces, yeah? So it's a way to identify two vector spaces, which might in principle be different, but the operations on them are essentially the same up to this, uh, invertible linear transformation between them, okay? So this is isomorphism. And uh, a couple of results uh, about this from 115A. So the first one was uh, theorem 219. So two vector spaces, V and W are isomorphic in the sense of this definition, if and only if, they have the same dimension. So the dimension of V is equal to the dimension of W, okay? And so uh, we know this, and uh, in immediate corollary of this uh, theorem is that uh, if V is a, a vector space over a field of scalars F, then V is isomorphic to the uh, vector space F to the power N. So this, remember, this is the space of sequences of scalars of length N. So V is isomorphic to Fn if and only if the dimension of V is the same as the dimension of uh, the vector space Fn, which is uh, just N. Okay. So we have this isomorphism if and only if the dimension of V itself uh, is N, okay? So we have this and also we have theorem to 20, which uh, establishes an important isomorphism, which uh, uh, strengthens our previous uh, idea that there was a correspondence between linear maps and matrices. So let V, W be two vector spaces over some field of scalars F and assume that the dimension of V is N and let's denote also the dimension of W as M. Okay, so we have N and M. Let also beta, gamma be ordered bases for the spaces V, W respectively. So beta is an ordered basis for V and gamma is an ordered basis for W, okay? Then the map, which we denote as capital Phi, capital uh, Greek letter Phi, from the space of 
the vector space of all linear transformations from V to W. So remember, we discussed it last time. This is a vector space. Uh, and uh, the map goes to the space of M by N matrices over F. Okay, so the map phi defined by phi of T is equal to the matrix representing T with respect to the ordered basis beta and gamma, okay? For all linear transformations T uh, in the vector space L of VW, okay? So this map is an isomorphism. Okay. And this follows from the various results we have discussed last time that uh, if you're calculating, uh, uh, for example, taking a sum of two linear transformations, uh, it gives you another linear transformation. We know it's uh, representing matrix is just the sum of the corresponding matrices, similarly for multiplying by a scalar, etc. Yeah. So those facts combined estab establish that this is an isomorphism. And in particular, if we have such an isomorphism, we have the following corollary. So if the dimension of V is equal to N and the dimension of W is equal to M for some NM, yeah? Then uh, we know the dimension of the vector space L of VW of all linear transformations from V to W. So we just said that isomorphism preserves dimension. So this is the same as the dimension uh, of this space, right? Because they are isomorphic. So this is the dimension of the space of all M by N matrices over F, okay? But for this, of course, we know the dimension. This is just M times N, okay? So this tells us that allows us to calculate the dimension of this uh, complicated looking space of all linear transformations because it just reduces to the dimension of the space of matrices. And for matrices, we know the dimension very well. Yeah, this is just M times N. Okay. So this is uh, isomorphism, uh, pro basic properties of isomorphisms and this particular important isomorphism, the correspondence between linear transformations and matrices. Now we move on to dual spaces. Okay, any questions about this so far? Okay, if not, uh, uh, let's uh, define, first of all, what a dual space of a given space is. So let V be a vector space over a field of scalars F, as usual, yeah? A field uh, of, excuse me, scalars F, okay? So note, first of all, that F itself can be viewed as a one-dimensional vector space over F. So which itself is a, a one-dimensional vector space over F. So namely F to the power one, yeah? So we know F to the power N. So in this case, it's just F to the power one. Oops. Uh, Excuse me. So this is the field itself, yeah? So F to the power one. Okay. So since we have these two vector spaces, V and the, uh, the field of scalars F, we can talk about linear transformations between them, yeah? So we can then consider uh, a linear transformation from V to F is called a linear functional on V. Okay. So it's just a special case of linear transformations which go from V to its field of scalars. All right. Uh, such linear, special linear transformations are very important uh, in various branches of mathematics. Let's consider a couple of examples. So the first one is actually an example from, um, from calculus or from analysis. So let V be the vector space over the field of reals 
So in this case, F is equal to the uh, field of reals of all continuous real valued functions okay uh, on the interval zero to pi so the interval is not so important as just an example here yeah to maybe uh, you can see something you have seen in, in other classes so and also fix some arbitrary function g in v oh and uh, i hope we, you remember yeah that the continuous functions uh, of this form they form form a vector space where we just add uh, two functions by adding the, the value of two functions on any given input on a new uh, given um, uh, argument right and multiply by scalars uh, correspondingly so this is an infinite dimensional vector space uh, and uh, okay so then <clears throat> once we have fixed uh, some function g like this then we can consider the function h from v to uh, r so from the vector space v of continuous functions to the uh, field of scalars r defined by an integral so defined by saying that the value h of x is equal to 1 over 2 pi integral from 0 to 2 pi uh, x of t g of t dt okay so integrate the product of two functions and we define it like this for all x in v okay so uh first of all note it's important x here uh, so we understand the types of uh, where the parameters come from right so x is a function yeah since x is an element of v it means x is itself <laughs> is a real function so then it makes sense to talk about the value of this function x of t on the given uh, argument t in the interval zero to pi right and so we can integrate uh, this product so this integral makes sense is well defined for every choice of the real fu uh, function x for, sorry for any choice of the continuous function x because then it's integrable also yeah uh, and uh, yeah as a product of two continuous functions it's integrable and we claim that this h defined in this way is a functional or linear functional let me say write it fully is a linear functional on v okay so this is indeed an example of a linear functional now why uh, how do we know this well we have to check that this is a linear transformation right but this follows from um, uh, the properties of uh, the definite integral because note that it is indeed a linear functional because if we want to calculate um, h of let's say c times x1 plus x2 where we have c is a scalar so just a real number and x1 x2 are um, some continuous functions right then this has to be the integral one over two pi uh, the same yeah but now i have c times x1 um, of t plus x2 of t right gt dt and now we can just use that uh, integration is is, is uh, linear so this is the same as the integral okay let me not write it fully so it's the same integral but now we have c times the integral of x1 of t g of t right plus uh, again we have uh, one over two pi well okay let me write this actually why not yeah so we have uh, one over two pi here from zero to two pi dt plus the same integral but now x2 of t times g of t dt right from zero to two pi okay but this is of course nothing else as just uh, c times h of x1 plus h of x2 yeah so this way we verify that h is indeed the linear transformation so it follows from the properties of integrals 
Yeah, this is some one of the most important examples of um, um, of linear transfer uh, linear functionals, uh, definite integration. Okay, so this example one. Yeah, is everyone okay with it? Okay, uh, let's consider another example. So example two. Uh, let this time V be the space of all n by n matrices over F. And uh, we define a function F from V to the field of scalars F by taking uh, the value of this function F on the matrix A to be the trace of the matrix A. Yeah, the trace of the matrix A and V. And uh, let me remind you that the trace of a matrix is given by the sum of the values uh, of the of its diagonal entries. So this is the sum A11 plus A22 plus etc. all the way plus ANN. Yeah? So this makes sense for a square matrix. It's the sum of all the diagonal entries. Okay. And then again, F is a linear functional. Okay, this just follows from the uh, properties of the trace, which you can check. And uh, one more example, the very crucial example for us here. So let V be a finite dimensional vector space uh, over F, the field of scalars, yeah? And uh, let us fix an ordered basis. So let beta consist of let's say x1 through xn be an ordered basis for v, OK? So in particular, the dimension of v is n, of course. Uh, OK, so then for each i ranging from 1, 2, et cetera, through n, we define a function. So we define a function fi of x equals to ai, where x is a vector in v. And uh, the presentation of this vector with respect to the ordered basis beta is given by a1, a2, etc., through an. OK, so this is the coordinate vector of x relative to beta. OK, so for, OK, so um, this way we get a function, right? So then fi is a function from v to the field of scalars f. And moreover, we claim that this is a linear functional. So then the phi is a linear functional on V called the ith coordinate function. With respect to the ordered basis beta. OK. So once again, uh, to recap, <clears throat> excuse me, to recap what it does, uh, if you given a vector, it just gives you the ith coordinate. So fi gives you the ith coordinate of this vector uh, with respect to the ordered basis beta. OK, so very simple function. It is a linear functional indeed, right? Because we know that if I add two vectors, for example, uh, the coordinate vectors also have to be added to calculate the coordinate vector of the sum, right? So this means in particular that the i's coordinates can get added and uh, similarly for multiplying by a scalar. So it is indeed a linear functional. Yeah, is everyone good with this? 
Okay. When you get the chance, can you go back? Uh, first example. Yes. So uh, let's do it now. So you just want to see it, or is there any any question about it? Okay, cool. Okay, uh, so we are going now to define uh, the dual space of a given vector space. So um, let's go back. So we define for a vector space V over F, we define the dual space of V to be the vector space L V F, okay? So we are taking, uh, we define the dual space of V to be the vector space of all linear functionals on V. And we denote it by V star. Okay, so star means dual. Okay. So just the definition so far. So the dual space of V is uh, literally the space of all linear functionals on V. Okay. And we also define the double dual V star star of V, okay, to be the dual of the vector space V star, the dual of V, okay? So when we take uh, the dual space of V, it is the space of linear functionals. So it is itself a vector space. So it makes sense to consider now linear functionals on the space of linear functionals again, right? Nothing wrong with that. Uh, of course, it seems a bit abstract, but we'll see. Uh, now, one can continue this game. You can take the dual of the double dual and get a triple dual, maybe, et cetera, right? But we are stopping here just at the double dual, and there is a reason for it. So we'll see that there is no, no point to actually um, uh, continue this game um, by taking more duals. Because, uh, yeah, well, we'll see soon. I don't want to spoil it. So, um, okay, so like I said, we start consists of all linear functionals on V, okay? So the first remark is that we can actually uh, quickly understand the dimension of the dual space. So if V is a finite dimensional vector space, yeah, then by, Theorem 220 that we just discussed about isomorphisms, right? We have uh, the following. So we have that the dimension of the dual space of V, V star, is uh, just the dimension of the space of all linear transformations from V to F, right? Just by definition, this is what V star is. Now for this, as we uh, remarked earlier, this is the dimension of the uh, space of matrices. What are the dimensions of these matrices? So the dimensions are the dimension of V times the dimension of F, yeah? The, uh, these two spaces between which these linear transformations go over F, okay? But this of course, uh, it's so a space of matrices with given dimensions. This is just the dimension of V times the dimension of F, right? But now what is the dimension of F? Well, F is a one dimensional vector space over itself, right? So then this is just dimension of V times one, which is just the dimension of V, okay? So just from this, we get this nice observation that the dimension of the dual space is the same as the dimension of uh, the space V itself. Right? So, uh, okay. And uh, in particular, this also tells us by uh, theorem 219, which we just discussed, uh, this tells us that V and V star are isomorphic. 
right? So it tells us that these two vector spaces are isomorphic. Uh, one important remark here, it's actually important that we start with a finite dimensional vector space V. So importantly, uh, this may be false. So this may fail if um, the dimension of V is uh, infinity, yeah? if it's not finite dimensional. And uh, I encourage you to think of an example. We'll see maybe some examples later in the course, but uh, I, I encourage you to think of one yourself. Yeah. So it's important in the assumption here, in the statement that we made here, in this remark, that V itself is a finite dimensional vector space. Okay. Um, all right, so now let's actually make this explicit. Let's find an explicit isomorphism. So in order to do this, it would be helpful to understand uh, what a basis of uh, the dual space can look like. Okay, so we have the following theorem to 24. Suppose that V is a finite dimensional vector space over F. And beta x1 through xn is an ordered basis. Okay. Then we let fi for i between 1 and 10 be the ith coordinate vector or coordinate function, rather, sorry coordinate function with respect to beta. Okay, so this is just the example. This is exactly the example we have discussed. So it's a function which uh, takes a vector and gives you the ith coordinate of this vector with respect to beta. And let us take beta star to be uh, the collection of all these functions. So f1 through fn, okay? So remember, each of i is a linear function, right? So then if I, each of i is an element of the dual space. And uh, if we define B star like this, it's a set of vectors in the dual space, okay? But the conclusion is that then beta star is also an ordered basis for the dual space V star, okay? And moreover, for any vector, f in v star, we have that it can be expressed as the sum over all i from one to n, f of x i, f i, okay? So note that here, each of i is a function, linear functional, and then f itself, since f is an element of the dual space, it is also linear functional, right? So we're saying that this linear functional can be written as a sum of the linear functional sfi multiplied by scalars. So note that this is just a scalar in f, the value of, um, uh, oh, excuse me, this should, yeah, this is just the value of f on the ith vector of the basis. Yeah. So then f indeed um, uh, is an element of uh, v star of this form. All right, so this is the statement. Let's prove this. Okay, so let f be an arbitrary vector in V star. Okay, now, as we just discussed, the dimension of V star is equal to n. Okay, um, so by, uh, by the remark that we just made, by the remark, excuse me, okay. Uh, so we see that uh, it has dimension n. Uh, this means that we only need to show that f is of the form i from one to n, f of x i times f i, because this will mean that uh, beta star indeed generates the dual vector space V star, okay? And it is of size N, 
by definition, right? It has n vectors. So of size n. Uh, hence, it has to be a basis for V star. So hence, um, beta star would be a basis for V star. Yeah, because uh, we know the dimension of V star is n. And if we find a generating set of size n, then it's automatically a basis, right? So this we know uh, by the from the basic properties of uh, generating sets. So this means we only need to check that every vector indeed can be represented as a linear combination of the fi's. Okay. All right. So let G be of this form. So let G be given by the sum i from one to n f of x i times f i. Okay. So let's take G like this. So note that uh, it is a linear combination of the linear functionals of i. So it is itself a linear functional. Okay. Then for each j between 1 and n, we have the following calculation. So we have g evaluated on the vector xj. Okay, let's write it out, just spelling out the definition. So g is defined to be this function. So this is the sum of i1, uh, i from 1 to n, excuse me, f of xi, fi. This is a function, g, and we apply it to xj, right? Okay, but now if we apply it like this, uh, what does it mean? So this just means we have to apply each fi to xj, right? So we get the sum i from one to n, f of xi, uh, f i of xj. Okay. Now let's consider these um, uh, elements in the sum a little bit. So fi of xj, what is this, right? So by definition, we have that fi of xj is equal to one if i is equal to j, right? And it's equal to zero if i is not equal to j, right? Because remember, if we have a, a vector in the ordered basis, xi, what are these coordinates with respect to this basis? So its coordinates are, of course, 0, 0, tra -ta -ta, 0, 1 in the position where in the position i, since it's xi, the ith vector of the basis, followed by zeros again, right? So then the value of the coordinate function for a vector in the basis is 0 if it's a coordinate different from the position of this vector in the basis, or 1 if it is the same one, right? So we get this very simple expression for this uh, fi of xj. Okay, but then using this, uh, we get that g of xj is simply f of xj, right? Because when we go over the sum, uh, we get that this is equal to zero for all i different from j. And hence the whole product is zero. So there is only one summand which is not zero. This is the summand corresponding to j, right? So we get that uh, g of xj is equal to f of xj, okay? But what does it tell us about the functions? So we see that f and g are two linear transformations. That agree on every vector in the basis um, uh, of v. Right, because the xi is least a basis, so we have two linear transformations uh, which agree on on the basis. But then this means that they are the same. This means they agree everywhere. Then, right? We know this property of linear transformations that they determine what what they do on a basis. So then they agree uh, everywhere. So uh, by uh, corollary to theorem two point six that we reviewed, we get that, uh, in fact, f is equal to g, okay? But this demonstrates that uh, f, which was an arbitrary element of the dual space, v star, 
is in fact of this form. It is a linear combination of the FIs. So this shows that uh, beta star, uh, the, consists of the collection of all FI, uh, is a generating set. And by what we remarked earlier, it follows that it is a basis, right? OK. So this concludes the proof. OK. So this shows that indeed beta star is a basis. Is everyone with me on this? Let me know if you have any questions about this argument. All right, um, so if not, okay, cool. So, so now we see that if you give me a basis for V, I can produce a basis for the dual space V star in this way, okay? So let's uh, attach a special name to this kind of basis for V star. So we have definition. Uh, the ordered basis beta star that we just uh, built in this theorem, F1 through um, Fn of V star that satisfies this property. Namely, the property that fi of uh, xj is equal to one if i is equal to j and zero if i is not equal to j. Okay. So this is called the dual basis of beta. Okay. So starting with the basis beta for v. We can define the dual basis V star beta star for the dual space V star using this construction. So basis satisfying this property is called the dual basis of beta. All right. So let's consider an example, a concrete example of this. So let beta be simply uh, uh, two vectors, two, one, three, one. Okay, so let this be an ordered basis for the vector space V equal to R square. Okay, so very, very nice vector space. And now suppose that uh, the dual basis beta star. Uh, is given by some vectors f1, f2. Okay, so so for now we just denote them abstractly as f1, f2, and our task is actually to see how to determine the dual basis explicitly. Okay, so we want to determine the formula for fi, or let's say for f1 first. So to determine uh, a formula for f1, okay. We know that by definition of the dual basis, it must satisfy the following equations. So by definition, must satisfy the following two equations. The first one is one is equal to F1 of two one, okay? Which is, uh, can be written as F1 of two E1 plus E2, where E1 and E2 is the standard basis for the vector space R2, right? Which uh, by linearity is equal to two F1 of E1 plus F1 of E2, okay? So this is the first condition. And the second condition is that we have zero is equal to F1 of three one, right? Because again, so F, uh, F1 is equal to one on the first vector equal to zero on the second vector in the basis, right? So it has to be equal to zero. Now again, let's write it as uh, F1 applied to the sum of the vectors in the basis. So three, one plus a two, which gives us three F1, E1 plus F1 of E2, okay? So we just have these calculations. Now note that this gives us uh, linear equations, right? So it gives us a system of linear equations, 
from which we can now calculate the actual values of f1 of e1 and f1 of e2. So solving the equations, we get that f1 of e1 is equal to minus 1, and f1 of e2 is equal to 3. Okay. So this tells us what uh, uh, this linear functional f1 has to do on the vectors in the basis. Hence, we can write it as a, uh, the function corresponding to it, right? So we have that f1 of xy is equal to minus x plus 3y. Okay, so this gives us an explicit formula for the first vector in the dual basis and applying the same argument. We can calculate uh, the second uh, vector in the dual basis. So again, the vectors in the dual basis are linear functionals, right? So it's a function. So this is equal to x minus 2y if you do the same calculation. Okay. So this is a simple example which shows how to how to actually calculate dual basis uh, for a given basis of the space V. You just have to write out the conditions which def uh, which uh, using which we define the dual basis, and then you have to solve linear equations uh, to get to get the answer. Okay. So this gives us um, this gives us um, okay an example of how to calculate the dual space uh, the dual base sorry the dual basis. All right. So now uh, let me give you one helpful, applic useful application of uh, dual spaces. Uh, let me move to the next page. So consider the following general problem. So assume we have two vector spaces, VW, are finite dimensional vector spaces over F, okay, with ordered basis beta gamma respectively and suppose that the dimension of v is equal to m the dimension of w is equal to n okay now recall by what we have been discussing that there exists a one-to-one -one correspondence between linear transformations t from v to w, okay? And m by n matrices over f. So namely our favorite usual correspondence. So t corresponds to the matrix representing t with respect to beta gamma, okay? So now, the question, suppose we're given a matrix, yeah? Okay, so given a matrix T, or let's say matrix A, excuse me, uh, which represents some linear transformation T with respect to beta gamma, yeah? We wonder when it is possible, so when uh, is it possible to find a linear transformation U represented by the matrix A transpose, okay, in some basis. So you see the uh, so to motivate this question, we already know that this correspondence it preserves, for example, um, uh, some addition multiplication by scalars, right? We also know that composition corresponds to multiplication by matrices, but we have also this important operation on matrices transposition. And what we are trying to understand is is there some natural operation uh, which corresponds to transposition of matrices on the size of linear transformations? Okay. And here it turns out uh, dual spaces are very helpful. So just a quick remark. So of course, we have that if M is not equal to N, then it is impossible for you to be a linear transformation from V to W. 
okay? Simply because the dimensions don't match. So we don't even know how to start because we need some guess about what could be the spaces that we are using to find an appropriate U, okay? And turns out that the dual spaces help here. So this leads us to the following theorem, 225, that I'm going to state uh, today and uh, we'll prove it next time. So let V and W be two finite dimensional vector spaces as usual, the finite dimensional vector spaces over F, okay, with ordered basis beta and gamma as usual, okay? Now, um, for any linear transformation T from V to W, we can consider the map, which we denote as T little t, so like T transposed, right? But we have to say what it means. So we define a transposition of a linear transformation. So this is going to be a map, but now from the dual space to W to the dual space for V defined as follows. So we take the value of this new map, TT of G. So G is now an element of the dual space W star. This is going to be the composition of the this functional G with the linear transformation T. And we define it like this for all G in W star, okay? And the claim is that the map TT defined like this is a linear transformation such that moreover, if we look at the matrix representing this new linear transformation, TT, T transpose, with respect to the dual basis, so gamma star, beta star, then this is the same as looking at the matrix representing T itself in the basis beta gamma and taking the transposition of this matrix. So on the right, we are taking the transposition of the matrix, but on the left, we have found a new linear transformation so that uh, the matrix representing this linear transformation is exactly uh, the transpose of the matrix on the right, yeah? So this gives us some, again, it, it, it expands even further this duality, this correspondence between operations on matrices and to linear transformations. But here we are forced to pass to dual spaces for this to work. Uh, let me just draw a picture uh for this which uh, to keep track of where all these maps are going yeah so we have uh here the situation that we have a space v and we have w and then i take a linear transformation t from v to w okay now we know that v uh corresponds to the dual space v star and also we have w star the dual space for w then the transpose map goes in the opposite direction so we have TT going in the opposite direction. And how is it calculated? So again, if I need to, if I have some element G here, right? So to calculate the value, uh, uh, the, the value has to be some function here, right? So, but we can take the transpose, uh, the composition. So if I apply T and then I apply, uh, sorry, if I apply T and then I apply G, so this gives me indeed uh, an element here. We'll verify it next time, okay? But this is basically the picture. So uh, I get a map which goes in the opposite direction and it corresponds, uh, the matrices, at the level of matrices, this corresponds to taking transposition. So without the dual spaces, we, we wouldn't be able to find uh, appropriate spaces for all these um, maps to, to, to go to, okay? All right, yeah, so I'm going to stop here. Uh, we'll prove it next time. And uh, yeah, thank you for your attention.